Good morning. morning. Welcome to Mount Carmel. It's good to see you on this 25th day after Pentecost. Next week is Christ the King Sunday, I believe. And then it's Advent already. And while you weren't paying attention, Christmas is almost here. It's it's amazing. (laughs) Went into Walmart yesterday and I knew it was Christmas season. No place to park, wall-to-wall people in lines at the registers. I just went in to get one item. Anyhow, uh, this Wednesday, I have have a few announcements. This Wednesday, there will be a combined Thanksgiving Eve service at Newmarket at 7 p.m. for both churches. It's here. It's here. With Newmarket. Yeah, I... Okay. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> George is going to be out of town. So <laughs> I'll be missing that. Okay, okay. Next Sunday, hopefully I'll get this one right. The 26th, Pastor Jenny will be returning to Mount Carmel to share the good news at the 10 a.m. service. No 9.30 services, no 9, 11 o'clock services, no Sunday schools. Uh, after the service, there'll be a social with pie. December 10th, Santa will be visiting us for cookies, crafts, and photographs. Uh, there's a link on the website to sign up. Uh, two opportunities for photographs with Santa. Should be a really good time. I don't know if Mrs. Santa is coming too, but uh, hopefully. If you're looking for the perfect gift for that person who has everything, our admission team can help you. Each Sunday from now until Christmas, a team member will be in the gathering hall to accept donations for Heifer International. This, I've checked them out online, and there are uh, one rating service rates them four out of four stars as far as a charitable, charitable organization is concerned. Um, Heifer International will then use your donation to buy livestock for impoverished people in the U.S. and the rest of the world. In return, you will receive a special card designed by our Sunday School students. We have several other outreach projects going on for um, care packages for college students. Items are due by the 22nd. Uh, We are collecting coats of all sizes for local students. Uh, also, dish soap, paper towels, and other items for needy Spring Ridge Elementary School families, and soups, hand warmers, ground coffee, etc., for the Linton Homeless Shelter. As always, please see your bulletins for a complete list of announcements and more details on the ones I just mentioned. And a reminder not to go to Newmarket next Wednesday night. Please join me in the call to worship by reading the bold print in your bulletins and on the screen. O Lord, on this the threshold of thanksgiving, our hearts are filled with thanks and joy. Joy that you are our God and we are your people. Thanks that you are as near as the prayers on our lips. Joy that we can come to you with our needs and you will hear them. Thanks that your community of faith surrounds us with love and compassion. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is Lord Whose Love Through Humble Service, number 581. Lord Whose Love in Humble Service for the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken were mercy's perfect deed. We, your servants, bring the worship, not a voice alone, but heart, consecrating to your purpose every gift which you impart. Oh, good. Sinners, children, all your illness, still the hungry cry for bread, still the captives long for freedom, still in grief we mourn our dead. As O Lord, your deep compassion healed the sick and freed the soul, does the love your spirit kindles still to save As we worship, grant us vision till your love's revealing light. And depth of greatness dawns upon our quickened sight. bids us bear, stirring us to tireless striving, your abundant life to share. Called by worship to your service, forth in your dear name we go, to the child thy you Love in living deeds to show. Hope and health, good will and comfort, counsel, aid, and peace we give. That your servants, Lord, in freedom, may your mercy know and give. Please be seated. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Jeff, and it is good to have you here for worship or watching us online. As we gather this morning, we're completing our second stewardship campaign this year, our capital campaign, as we think about how we might help pay down the debt on our church building that was established and added onto this sanctuary now 13 years ago. And so over the next three years, we're asking for a commitment. And so at the end of the service, we'll have a, a pledge card and an explanation letter uh, for you. And I'd ask you to take that with you and prayerfully consider how you might want to contribute to that campaign. And then to bring that back next week as we celebrate and give thanks for all that God has done and is doing and all we will be doing in the coming years as we move through this campaign. I'm still anticipating a day will come when that debt will be paid and you'll invite me to come back for a, a time to burn that mortgage and then to look forward to how you will be able to live your faith without that debt. 
But today, I just ask you to pray and to consider how you might help. We've talked about it and shared enough about it. Even though it's a stewardship message today, it's really about much more than that. I realized when I came, what, four months ago, that there were three things that we'd need to do. One was to look at making sure we had enough funding to take care of the budget and make sure that the doors were open and everything was paid. And we've done that. And we celebrated this week with the church council that we've set the 2024 budget. And now to look at the capital campaign and what we might do to reduce that debt. But the third thing I looked at was saying our numbers were low and we needed to grow the congregation. And I set a goal out there of having 100 people in worship on a Sunday morning by Christmas. Last week, if you noticed in your bulletin, we had 88 people. That's the largest attendance we've had since I've been here. And it's been slowly growing, a little slower than I thought it was going to, but it's slowly growing. And I anticipate as we move into December, as we come into Advent and preparation for Christmas, those numbers will continue to grow. And so I encourage you to continue to invite people to come and join us for worship and continue to come and worship God yourself. For it's an opportunity for us to see what is growing here I'm aware that the ministries and the life of this congregation are, are kind of coming to life as you heard the list of the missions and the various things that we are doing as a community of faith. It's my hope as we move into 2024, we will find God guiding us and leading us even into more things and ways that we might help connect more people with the faith in Jesus Christ. How might you and I help to do that? Well, that's a part of the message today, and so we will share that. But it is so good having you here today. And again, after the service, I'll share with you a copy of the sermon synopsis and invite you to come and have a little time of fellowship and uh, greet one another. But as we are here, it is good to be a, blessed to be your pastor. And I thank you for being here. Somebody mentioned this morning, you know, it was good for me to be here as you preach. I got to tell you, it's good to have you here because, you know, I wouldn't have anybody to preach to if you didn't show up. You know? and, and thank God you all are and you are online. So thank you for being here or being where you are, but with us electronically. And God bless you as we go forward. At this time, we'll read our scripture. Donna, you've got the scripture this morning. Come and read it for us. Good morning. good morning. I bring you good news from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. It's the parable of the talents. For it is as if man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of whose slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. 
But the master replied, oh, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this morning, as we look at this particular session, it's really about giving what you've got and giving what God has given to you is part of what we do. I'm guessing you, like me, have had an opportunity driving down the highways every once in a while. I get surprised as I try to read some of the billboards and things that I see along the road. And I've seen signs, maybe you have as well just says, Jesus saves. You ever drive down the road and see one of those giant billboards? Maybe it's a local church that has put that out there just to let people know, to catch their eye, have them think while they're driving down the road about how Jesus saves us, right? And I think I've preached about that before. Well, the phrase I want to look at today is maybe the corollary that goes with that, that maybe you've not heard so much about, but I want you to remember and reflect because that's what this story says. Not so much that Jesus saves, but that God invests. Right? God has invested in you and me, much like the master invested in these servants with the five talents or the three talents or the one talent. Someone asked at the early service, what's a talent? Best description I remember getting is, as I was going through seminary, it's like a year's wages, okay? So it's a big amount of money, five years' worth of wages, three years' worth of wages, one whole year's worth of wages. And so it's a, a huge investment that the master gives to these three servants. God invests in you and me. God has given you life. God has given you talents and gifts and abilities. What are you doing with it? The story of creation, Genesis chapter 1, God gives us a purpose or a reason. We're here to take charge, right? Or to take care of the world, to take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, everything crawling on the ground. And God said, I give you all the plants on the earth and yield seeds, seeds that the trees, as fruit produces its seeds within it, these will be your food. God has created us in God's own image to take care of God's And so today, I want you to think, perhaps, like the, the message on the billboard, not just about how God, Jesus saves you, but how God invests in you, how we can share what we have received, the salvation that we have received, the love that we have received, the grace and mercy that we have received, and then share it with others. Brought along a book today. Let's see if I can. Basically, the highlight of the title of the book by Dwight uh, Robertson is Your God's Plan A. Okay? And he talks about how we are, are gifted with the good news of Jesus Christ. And it's you know, God's plan that we will take care of the earth and we will spread the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, you are God's plan A. And as many of us think about it, not only is there a plan A, but there's more than that, right? But Dwight says, there is no plan B. It's up to us, right? Don't think that somebody else is going to do it. You know, if you think about it, you may be in the right place at the right time. And by the time the next person gets there, it'll be the wrong time. Or that person who is there at the right time at the right place won't be there anymore. And it will be the wrong place. But you're at the right place at the right time somewhere, somehow this week. To be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ by the way you live, by what you say, what you do, how you impact people. 
So this is a little book that really will teach us a little bit about evangelism or outreach. And I'm going to work with the outreach and evangelism team and, and uh, share with them some of the insights that Dwight has. And it's his conviction that evangelism is not about inviting people to come to church, though we do that. It's really about taking the church out to where the people are. <coughs> So that's what Jesus did. Jesus just didn't sit in the synagogue and say, hey, if you want to talk to me, come to the synagogue. He went walking out among the people. He went to some of the places some other people wouldn't even go to. He went to Samaria, right? But he would go, and when he went there, they'd have church, right? He'd teach a little bit, heal a little bit, do some things with the people right where they were. And so Dwight, in his book, wants to let us know that the plan isn't so much about getting people to come in the doors. It's to get the people in the doors, out of the doors, out to where people are, where the needs are, where we can impact people and make a difference. And so he tells stories, chapter after chapter, of various people he's met along the way. doesn't share so much of his story. He shares other people's stories. He must be a good preacher because that's what I often do. I share people's stories. And he talks about a guy by the name of James the Roofer, right? The problem was Dwight had a hole in his roof and the water was dripping into the living room. And so he goes to the yellow pages. You could tell it's an old book, right? He goes to the yellow pages and, and he finds all the roofers and calls and finally gets a hold of this guy who's very nice on the phone, very courteous on the phone, says, I'll be right there. And he was. And he went up on the roof, gave him an estimate, felt good about it. So he gave him the job. And the next day he came and he prepared it took half the time that he said it would. He gave him a bill that was half the price that the estimate was. He said, nobody does that, right? Everybody, you know, hedges and adds and fudges. And... But James the Roofer was honest. And so Dwight talked to him about it and said, why and how has this happened? You know, I've never experienced this before. So James the Roofer began to tell about his faith and how he was changed by Jesus Christ to become honest and to be helpful to people through what gifts God had given him to climb up on people's roofs and repair them. You and I are like James the Roofer. We might be at the right place at the right time to say something to someone, to do something for someone, to make a difference out there for someone. Not waiting for them to come in here, but to go out where they are. And just by the way we live our faith, the way we live our lives. And yes, if the opportunity arrives, the way we share our faith, the way we say what we might be able to say. And then Dwight goes on to say, we all have something to say. We all have our own lives, our own stories, our own experiences of our faith. And sure enough, you know, you're, you're blessed as you've been involved with church and involved with you know, worship and maybe Sunday school or reading your Bible. That you really have a, quite a repertoire, if you will, of things that you can say to people. And what you can share with people is really your story, your life story. He said most people think there's four Gospels, right? You've, you've got those, right, in your Bible. You've probably read maybe some of them. You've heard sermons on probably all of them. But we know there's Matthew and Mark, Luke and John. But Dwight said, you know, there is a fifth gospel, and that's you. You've got your own version of the gospel. You've got your own stories, much like Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. They all had stories about Jesus that they shared. None of them are the same. There's similar stories in a few of them, but they're from a different perspective, from a different author. You've got stories as well. What stories do you share? Maybe it's stories of how you've Come to faith and people who have brought you to this point. Maybe it's stories of life in the church, whether it's this church or a previous church. Maybe it's your story of what's going on this week in your life or what maybe just happened yesterday. I'm always blessed when I hear people share their stories and realize that in that story, they've got a gospel, they've got a good news that they share about something that happened, and they can give thanks to God for it, or talk about a, a person who helped and, and was there at the right time, at the right place for them. And then we have an opportunity to go and to share, by the way we live and what we say, that gospel for others. 
Because there's so much need out there. How might we make a difference? And I believe we do that by the little things that we do. They don't have to be huge. It might just be a little simple thing that we do, but it might have a huge impact. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. And then Dwight talked about the domino effect. Do you know the domino effect? I mean, I played dominoes with my grandmother. Don't know whatever happened to that old set of grand. I'm guessing my sister got it because I didn't get that. But mom had, you know, and it was just a little simple. I think we had double sixes. That's all there was. <clears throat> Small little set of dominoes. But not only do we play dominoes, right? But, but then, you know, you get to play by yourself and just stack them up. You ever line those up, right? And, and then you push the first one and what happens? Yeah, you know, just domino effect is what it's called. When one leans into the next, leans into the next, leans into the next, they all fall down, right? And Dwight says, you know, we all are a product of the domino effect. The faith we have today is an effect of the domino effect. Because Jesus affected 12 people. We know that, right? The disciples 2,000 years ago. And those 12 went and they affected others. And they affected others and others and others on down through history. And now, 2,000 years later, that domino effect's finally got to us, right? But it won't go any further if we don't lean into someone, right? You're God's plan A. And there's no plan B. If you don't touch the next domino, that next domino's never going to get touched. You and I have an opportunity to live our life, live our faith, to make a difference in someone's world. And we really don't know what that difference is going to be, how long it might take before that difference takes hold. But you can imagine that just as some effect 2,000 years ago has come down to affect you today, things that you do today, this week, not only will have an effect for someone this week, but for someone that they'll come in contact with and someone they'll come in contact with. We kind of know that from communicable diseases, right? COVID, yeah, if you cough on someone, then they go cough on someone else, and the disease spreads. Well, the good news kind of spreads that way. You go and share God's love. You go and share the good news. It's going to touch someone. As they go and share that good news you shared with them, wow, look at what happens over time. I give thanks to God there were 88 people here last week. I don't know to what degree I touched any of you, but I hope there was something, you know, maybe something you remembered from the message. I don't even remember what I talked about a week ago, but maybe you do because it was so good. I heard people say, oh, it was so good. Oh, I appreciate that. You remember it? Yeah, you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. There's no quiz this week. Yeah, what did the pastor preach about? <laughs> yeah, if I step on your toes, you'll remember that, right? Ah. But, you know, stop and think about it. We do. We have an opportunity to affect people in hopefully a positive way, not a negative way, by what we do and what we say. So I celebrate the number of people who were here last Sunday. But I also celebrate during the week, I got to preach to over 150 people. You maybe didn't know, but twice a month, I get to do chapels with the children here at the preschool. We've got about 110 kids. And then there's teachers and assistants and other people come in when there's chapel time. I don't get all 110 in here at once, okay? Some of them are Tuesday, Thursdays. Some of them are Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Some are morning, some are afternoon. I do five chapels during any given week when I have chapel. Two of them on, on uh, Wednesday and three of them on Thursday. But this week was family chapel, my first opportunity to not only do chapel with the kids, but parents, grandparents, older, younger siblings, other people were here as well. They didn't come to hear me, they came to hear the kids, because the kids have been practicing songs about Thanksgiving and turkeys, and as soon as I was done with chapel, the kids all lined up up here and sang their little songs, and parents videotaped it. I don't think they videotaped my message, but they, you know, were here. <laughs> And it was a captive audience, and so I got to say some things to them, right? I don't know who got touched, but hopefully some of them. I know the kids do. I know the kids do. They pick up what I've been sharing with them, and I get stories back from the teachers. I sometimes get stories back from the parents. 
each of us as an opportunity throughout the week to touch someone, to make a difference in someone's world. Don't know where he doesn't quote anything in the book, but Dwight says even the most introverted among us in a lifetime will touch tens of thousands of people. Now, again, you might be introverted and you don't interact with many people, but if you happen to interact with, you know, one person who's outgoing and that person has a positive experience, something maybe you reflected and said, or by golly, that person will go and spread the good news. I mean, Jesus didn't write a gospel. I hope you know that, okay? Matthew did, Mark did, Luke did, John did, and you've got a copy, but Jesus didn't. But Jesus still affects all of us because others picked up that story and ran with it. As you receive the story today, take it and run with it. Give it all you've got. Spread the good news. Because you're God's plan A. And there is no plan B. Well, in the story that we have today, I think the next slide maybe will give us it. Yeah, well done, faithful servant. We had... Two of them, they're listed as having taken that money from the master and immediately gone out and started, you know, buying and selling, trading, whatever they did, and doubled the money over the period of time the master was gone. They went and did all that they could do to make a difference. God invested in them five talents, and they went and they made five talents. But the line I really pick up when I look at that is in verse 15. He said, he gave to each servant according to that servant's ability. And you can imagine this story is not really about a master and slaves. It's really about God and us. And not only does God know what our abilities are, God put them there in the first place, right? God created us with that gift, with that ability. And now God's investing in us the opportunity to use that gift, whatever it is. So it's my hope that each of us will begin to discover what our gifts are, what our abilities are, what it is that we might do. Well, for the glory of God. What is it that we might do that will make a difference, not just today, but perhaps, depending on which dominoes we touch today, perhaps for generations. We have an opportunity to make a difference in someone's world today by something that we do, something that we say, and I'll encourage you to do that. What is it that you have received, like these who received an investment from the master, to do something with it? And what might you do? I give thanks to God that Though I tried to retire once, I, I've been pulled back into service, and, and I've been enjoying it. I've shared that with you before, and I truly, honestly mean it. You know, I love having something to do, and you give me that opportunity. I, I've told people I love church meetings, you know, and I, I love all the meetings this church has. There's certain weeks, and I get like seven or eight meetings, and then five chapels on top of that. I'm just living the good life. <laughs> But, but I have to tell you, I have cycles, and maybe you do as well. I'm a morning person, and so having morning worship is good. Wednesday night, I'm going to be exhausted at 7 p.m. Even Christmas Eve, I will be exhausted, particularly at the 11 p.m. service, after a morning service and the afternoon services and 11 p.m. over at Fairview Chapel. I'll be worn out, right? I'll take naps in between each service, and hopefully again, I'll regenerate, but... You know, I'm a morning person. I always have been. As a child, I can remember getting up early in the morning and, and doing my homework because I was exhausted at night. I couldn't do it, couldn't think straight. And same is true. You know, if, if the meeting runs past 8 o'clock, I'm, I'm starting to fade. You know, even though I love the meeting, I just can't concentrate for 12, 14, 16 hours like I used to back in the good old days. But what I can do is get up in the morning, clear my head, open with prayer and Bible study, and then see what all God has laid upon me to do. And so I write out a to-do list. And then throughout the day, I try to get it done. And sure enough, there's things that I have to carry on to tomorrow because I can't get it all done. But I just love laying my head down at night and saying, boy, I'm exhausted because I know I did all I could do for God today. It's my hope and prayer we'll each find those days where we can just lay our head on the pillow at night and say, 
Thank you, God, for this day, for what I was able to do for you today. Give it all you've got. How might we live our faith that way? Well, it's probably the old adage that I remember. Don't just stand there, but do something. Whatever that something is, right? We're plan A. Do something. Whatever it might be, it might be small. But to the person for whom you do it, it might be huge. Maybe it's a simple phone call or a visit to share with someone that you see them, that you recognize them, that you know them, that you care about them. That's huge. And we can do that. And I'm going to encourage you to do that. Whether they come to church or not, doesn't matter. Whether the church goes to them, that matters. That's God's plan A. Take the good news that you received today and share it with someone in the way that you have an opportunity to live the gospel, to be the gospel for someone else. What is it that you might do? Today, I'll encourage you to do that. Remember an old story that I've heard and shared in other sermons over the years. I guess I'm done. Well, I don't have a slide on this one, so I don't need it. But we're going to see what happens here. Debrine's hurrying to see if she can figure out back there. We'll pray for her. But anyway, the story goes that, you know, there was you know, a football game going on. And somebody was confused by it, you know. They didn't understand the game. Didn't understand, what on earth are you doing there? And, and so somebody said, well, you got to go over and ask the coach. Coach will know what's going on. And the coach said, let me see if I can describe it to you this way. Out there on the field, there's 22 people desperately in need of a rest. And up in the stands, there's 50,000 people desperately in need of some exercise. I mean, if you think about it, there are people out there putting their all into the game, and the rest of us are munching on popcorn. And, you know, Christianity is not a spectator sport, people. You are plan A. And today I want to encourage you to get out there and to play it and to give it all you've got. There, there's a hymn that I chose for the end of, of this service that helps us to maybe get into the game. It's I Surrender All. It's good old you know, Christian uh, standard of, of uh, faith, uh, uh, social gospel. I surrender all. And my question is, do you do that? Do you give it your all? And as we get ready for the stewardship campaign, first of all, let me tell you, don't give it all. You need to have something to live on, right? So don't put it all in there, even though we need to raise huge amounts of money. Give what you can give. But today I do want to talk about giving your all. First of all, I don't know what you've got. And I'm guessing, like most of us, you probably don't know what you've got. But in a moment, we're going to take an offering. And when we do that, I'm going to challenge you to take everything out of your wallet, everything out of your purse, and give it all. Now, I know how much I had because I already gave it. I have $65, and I just gave it. But you know what? I thought, well, now I got another service, and I already gave all my money away. I wrote a check because I always have a check. So here's another $65 I'll put in the offering plate today at this service and one for the next service. But I will. We passed around the plates, and I said, take a $10 or a $5 bill out of there. Do you remember that Sunday? Oh, you remember that one. <laughs> Longer than that one, you'll remember this one, because I described this one as the great train robbery. Have you ever been in a train robbery? If you've ever been robbed, I don't want to bring up any social concerns that you, and, and things that maybe resonate with you in the midst of that trauma. But if you've never been robbed, no, I've never been robbed. You have today, right? This is a stick up. I want all, every, all your money. Put it in the plate when that comes. You don't even know what you have. How are you going to miss it? Okay. But, but you know, we're going to do something good with what God has given us. Just like the story of the talents here. Right? When the master came back and didn't just say, yeah, give me half of what you got. Give me some of what you got. He said, give it all. Okay. And we're going to sing that. And if you can, sing it with me. I surrender all. I can because I just stuck it in there. If you have to, sing I surrender some. But please, pick another Sunday when you know you only have a dollar and then give the whole dollar and then you can sing, I surrendered all one Sunday, okay? But please, I don't want you to be desperately poor. I think that happened to the early church and that's a whole other sermon. But today, I want you to give. 
and to feel good that you gave your all and then live that way each day. Whatever it is that you can do, just give your all for Jesus because you are plan A and there is no plan B. Live that way. I wrote these words this week that I hope help to express some of that story. With unique gifts, the Lord made you. With God's blessing, you were made. So that whatever you may do, God's glory will be displayed. Fulfill today the Lord's requests. Jesus saves, but God invests. Believe that God believes in you and gives to you your purpose. Praise God through everything you do. Put in a word for Jesus. Fulfill today the Lord's requests. Jesus saves, but God invests. You yourself are the Lord's plan A. Know that there is no plan B. Sharing good news in the world today is all up to you and me. Fulfill today the Lord's requests. Jesus saves, but God invests. Hallelujah and amen. I'll invite the choir to share with us a message. Hold on to hope.
Well, we continue our, get my button here, worship service with the prayers of the people. I know there are a number of joys, a number of concerns out there that we kind of bring before God. But I'd start off by asking if there are some joys that people would like to share. I mean, it's Thanksgiving. For what are you giving thanks? What are those joys in your life? Yes, Renee. We're thankful that um, we're going to be able to have most of our family with my parents this week. All right, getting most of the family together. I got half of my family will be together. That's yeah, all right. The other half will be up in New York. What else? Rooting? How about the robotics team? We'll have a show in the church next month, and they already finished, almost finished their robotics uh, of the, the games. Uh -huh. Well, bless your heart. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing. I saw earlier what the team had done last year. I'm looking forward to see what they're doing this year. See that. And, and again, to invite those families and the other uh, students and the team. That would be great to have them with us. I think it's the 10th we're working on of, of December. We'll see them. Thank you for that. What else? What are the other joys? Yes. I had a uh, co-worker this week who had major surgery and uh, came through it very, very well. And oh, good. All right. Major surgery, but back home resting now. I'm recording the joys. We'll shut it off for the concerns because sometimes people are concerned about concerns and not sharing them with everyone. Any other joys, though? Yes, Diane. I'm very joyful and pleased that Bart started my friends going to worship today. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for the opportunity to share with Sorry, the first day you're here, I ask you for all your money, Bart. But, you know. <laughs> Do come back. Do come back. I don't do that every week. Yeah, right. You know, pff, they're leaving them like flies. No. Any, yeah. Um, I'm very thankful and uh, give praise to God. Uh, my son-in-law uh, works for Homeland Security, and he was uh, providing security for the APEC meeting that was out in San Francisco with President Biden and Z, and there were no... Problems. No problems. Okay. And he's home safely now. Home safely. Good. That is good news. Yes. Bob. It's great to have my daughter and granddaughter here this morning. Yes. Yes. Good to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> what else? Becky? I'm grateful for all the people who contributed their musical talents. Ah, all the people who contributed their musical talents. Thank you. Appreciate that. Nikki? Wow. All right. You got one who's a top choice college. Good. God bless you through all of that. It's a, it's a really small school in West Virginia. It's called West Liberty University. Oh, oh yay. <laughs> Talk to them after service. Yeah, we got alumni here. Well, God bless you as you do those uh, college visits. I'm glad you got a number one spot, possibly now. Okay. Well, oh, there's another one. Yes, another joy. Um, my stepsister-in-law was put on the heart transplant list. They found one on Thursday. They did the surgery on Friday. Uh, everything went okay as planned. Um, no news is good news as to how she's doing with it, but we can only pray that it gets better. One day at a time. We'll keep her in prayer. Thank you for that update. Yes, we've been praying for her while she was waiting for a heart. Yes. Going through that process. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to shut off the video, and we're going to talk about some concerns that we have. But God bless you all for joining.